It's the battle of the governors. California leader Gavin Newsom leaving his dumpster fire of a state to make a surprise stop at a Florida college to attack Ron DeSantis. Newsom and DeSantis have been taking swipes at each other for the past two years. Both have been mentioned as presidential hopefuls for 2024. Gavin taking this pot shot at DeSantis and his push for education rights. Every single thing this guy does, he does with intention because he's a weak guy masquerading as if he's a strong guy. So he takes on the most vulnerable consistently. Yet all of them are just bewildered that they're being used as a pawn in a political game to try to reshape higher education across this country. This is a full on assault of higher education and fr academic freedom. And the Florida governor is going on blue turf. DeSantis showing up in Michigan today. This leftist agenda, the woke ideology, is a threat to our freedoms. We fight the woke in the legislature, but we also fight the woke in the schools. We fight the woke in the bureaucracy, and we fight the woke in corporate America. Our bottom line is we do not surrender to the woke mob. But I've noticed it. You know, the amazing part of all this, Jesse, is the fact that, you know, Newsom said that the students in uh, Florida should feel like pawns, when the truth is um, he apparently had for had forgot that he was masking kids longer in school than any other governor, and yet he wants to preach about freedoms. Yeah, he's a weirdo. He said one thing, I'm crawling out of my skin for you. It's a weird thing to say. Remember when Romney said I'm severely conservative? Something off about this guy, Gavin. I can't put my <laughs> finger on it. This is like the undercard. You get up here, you get Trump and Romney. And then in the undercard, you get DeSantis and you get Newsom. And Newsom seems like this, maybe like a bantamweight who's just trying to like, 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 and, and DeSantis is just kind of sitting there like, seriously? Like, seriously? What are you doing? It looks like he's just trying to, campaign in case Joe Biden yeah. doesn't campaign. And so he's getting loose and he's starting to feel himself and go to these red states and kick up dust. But it doesn't really land because he says he attacks the most vulnerable. DeSantis has attacked Disney, the Fed chair, the teachers union, the Biden administration. I don't see DeSantis as a guy that he's like picking on vulnerable people. I think he's a guy that sticks up for vulnerable people like the average guy. You know what I think is, is almost ironic, Dana, is the fact that you had this stabbing of this young woman in D.C. Mm -hmm. And the Virginia attorney general, who's a Republican, uh, is talking about the fact that apparently the guy who stabbed her um, is someone who's been released over and over again. So you have like... Um, you know, a, a red state complaining about the fact that when their people go to a blue state, they actually get stabbed and murdered there. That's kind of analogous to this. I mean, California has the highest homeless rate, fentanyl deaths, all homicides are up. Who's he to talk about what works and what doesn't? Well, and not only that, but think about the electric grids in California collapsing under because they're trying to move too quickly on, yep. on, on a green transition. You have California running out of U-Hauls. <laughs> Because everybody wants to leave. I mean, you have to. I, I lived in San Diego for three years. We left a little reluctantly. However, the 9 11 attacks had happened, and I had an opportunity to go back to D.C. Otherwise, we'd probably still be in California, except maybe we would have gotten a U Haul as well, because you have to work really hard to get people to want to leave there, and so many people have left. Newsom keeps elevating DeSantis as if he's the Republican standard bearer. So it's probably a relief to DeSantis for DeSantis in a way because he keeps getting hit by Trump from this side. And he's like, I'd rather actually maybe fight with Gavin Newsom because it does elevate him and it gives him a chance to play his card, which is to say, wait, what about all the Californians that have moved to Florida and why are they moving here? Let's talk about my economy. Let's talk about the fact that my schools were open during COVID and you could go down the list. So I do wonder, though, about Gavin Newsom being a little bit clever here. And hear me out. There, is, uh, there are three governor's races in 2023. We're not really talking about them too much, except in those states they are. Uh, I'm going to get, I, I can remember two. I'm just like Rick Perry right now. Uh, yeah. Louisiana, <laughs> third one. Louisiana <laughs> Mississippi, and if anybody else, I can't remember the third one. But watch the one in Mississippi because Gavin Newsom's going there, and I believe that the Democrats have what they think is a pretty good candidate in Mississippi, and that's why they're trying to make some moves. Mm.
Interesting. Well, what about the fact, Jessica, that neither has announced, and it appears that Gavin, for all his, you know, throwing his jacket over his shoulder uh, at the White House when uh, when Biden was out of the country, um, he he can't announce before July if Biden doesn't. What's going on there? Well, he made it perfectly clear he's not running. He's going to support President Biden in his reelection bid. I have no reason to think that plans have changed and that Joe Biden will not be running for re-election. Um, but what I was overwhelmed with watching this is how much this is what the American public want to see. They want to see two young governors, right, 40s and 50s, who have track records to defend, who have charm, different kinds of... I've heard DeSantis is charming. I don't find him as charming as I might find Gavin Newsom. But... People are, and it shows it on both sides, they don't want a nominee in their 70s or 80s. They want to see who's next, what's happening here. And I think that that is something important to be giving the American public to say there are young stars coming up in both of these parties, and you should pay attention to that. Um, I know Dana brought this up yesterday on the show and talked about it this morning on America's Newsroom, what happened in Wisconsin. Um, with the Supreme Court there and the fact that they lost their supermajority. And is anyone on the Republican side going to address what's going on with younger voters, just the bleeding of Gen Z and, frankly, millennial voters? And when they talk about education, there's an important point there for younger voters, because if the Republican position and DeSantis is, goes so hard at the teachers' unions, that's going to be a problem for them. And likewise, Newsom has to moderate his position on that to talk about what might have gone wrong in public schools. But last week, Governor DeSantis very quietly signed a permitless carry bill. He usually does very public signings. This one was in private. The NRA lobbyist was there. Even 62% of Republicans opposed that bill. And you look at something like what's going on in Idaho, that's first state to restrict interstate travel to get abortion care. With things like that looming over the Republican Party, they will not be able to win an election. I suspect you're right that youth is probably appealing to the electorate, but I think more appealing than youth is uh, authenticity, not being a fraud. And that line stuck out to me as well, Jesse. I'm crawling out of my skin for you. Right. He's not <laughs> crawling out of his skin for anyone. No <laughs> vulnerability that he sees out there, no vulnerable class. It's a fraudulent message. He has no empathy. He is not there to fight for any little man. He, Bud Light, for example, doesn't care about Dylan Mulvaney's 365 days of womanhood. Nike doesn't care about the transgender movement. This is all incentive-based. For them, it's business. For him, it's playing these people for potential votes. And you know, the most fraudulent aspect of this is his record. He, was, he inherited the Pacific Ocean. Yeah. and ruined it. Yeah. People are leaving yep. California. Good luck convincing the American people. Where are we going to move when we're done with Gavin Newsom? Mm. Yeah. But, by the way, isn't it a snake that crawls out of his skin? It does. Yes. So maybe maybe Gavin Newsom so. is actually making your skin crawl. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.